So the Devils, J Dog back to answer more goddamn questions. First, before we get to the questions, this is my first day back from uh, Metal Threat. So all you guys and girls that came out to me and you know said hi and shot the shit, you know it's definitely cool meeting all you guys. Putting a lot of the uh, faces to the commenters. I mean, most of the guys I met, you said, yeah, I never comics. So I'd ask you, what was your uh, user ID? I'm like, oh, I don't leave comments and shit. Yeah, I understand. I, I usually don't. Well, I not usually. I never do on videos myself. But the ones that do, met definitely met a few too. So that was like, fucking even cooler, especially the guys that comment all the time, me and them. So um, that was pretty fucking awesome. And another thing too, so all the questions for today will be pretty much order questions, unless I knock them all off pretty quick. Quite a few of them though. Um, so those are piling up. And then I'll go to the next video online. But I'm sure there were some order questions that got overlooked uh, while I was gone. While I was at Metal Threat, uh, I had a couple of the um, employees doing the orders. And I think there was some ones with uh, order questions. that are like, oh, man, what the fuck? Totally skipped my question. Well, this is out of town. Like I said, there's going to be um, one-off times where that fucking shit happens. You know what I mean? Dog ain't around fucking 24-7, but he, most of the fucking time. Anyways, let's get the fucking oldies out of the way first. These ones I've had. A couple days ago, I put off to the side. I think it was the uh, shit. I think these ones I might have been put off to before I even left, like Thursday or so. Uh, anyways, uh, from Kenny Hale. It says, uh, kind of wish there was a random CD option to check out new music. Never heard the Einherger before, so that will be cool to check out. I would pridefully PayPal the dog himself to pick me out some random CDs. Love checking out new tunes, tune skis. Also, can Rotting Crush be re-released on CD as well. Jeez, that's hard to find. On uh, the Rotting Crushed, I think we're doing the CD as well. I'm sure Keith was probably not have a problem with it. Um, <clears throat> it was definitely set up for an LP, uh, but uh, I think maybe Eric asked about doing a CD too when he was talking about layouts. Uh, but I, I mean, I'd be up for it. I wouldn't be against it. Uh, it's just I wasn't super stoked to do a CD because I already owned the original, but I wouldn't mind, you know, putting it out just as a release and have it in, in, uh, in circulation again. Because I even asked Keith too then if we could do T-shirts. And I said, like, yeah, fuck yeah. So, I mean, LP and shirts, uh, he said yes to. So, don't see any re reason why not on a CD. And then as far as, uh, it's funny you said, yeah. Email me at service at hellsheadbangers.com. Service at hellsheadbangers.com is the email. I do all those fucking emails. Um, yeah, I can place an order for you if you want. Just like, yeah, if you want to say, hey, I want to spend $50, pick out this. You can do that. That's happened a few times, believe it or not. I remember this one chick used to call up and uh, she'd order stuff for her husband. She'd tell me like kind of what bands he already has, like suffocation, whatever, to give me an idea of what kind of stuff he likes. Uh, she wasn't a metal chick, but he was. So like for his birthday and Christmas, she would call up back when we had the phone service. And she'd be like, yeah, can you just pick me out $100 worth of stuff that you think you would like in this style? No problem, brah, brah. Those are the kind of orders I like, God damn it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think those fucking orders are awesome. J-Dog, pick me out some stuff that you think I like. Um, just give me some, just give me a basic background of what, what you prefer. Do you prefer black metal, death metal, grindcore? You know, don't don't send me any shitty fucking mortician, I'm, stuff like that. You know what I mean? So I would know what I'm working with. I'm a thrash guy, dog, that type of thing. But uh, yeah, we can do that. And then just give me a fucking um, kind of a balance that you would be willing to spend fifty dollars, hundred dollars, whatever the hell it is. Um, yeah, I can uh, I, I can pick ones out for you. No problem there, Barbara. Just hit me up an email. So that option exists. It's just not one match on the site. Uh, Ar Archer Bach. Question, J-Dog. What's up with these bands on What's In My Bag? Question mark. <sighs> Got me. That's what the fuck I said. Last band on there was Fool of Hell, Power Violence, Grindcore, Death Metal Noise, and I don't think a single metal record was showing off. Yep, yep, yep. Mostly jazz, funk, soundtracks, punk, and even some yo, 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 homeboy music. Sounds about right. Does Amoeba Records encourage these bands to just show off stuff outside the respective genres, or do all these bands just not care about any current or old metal at all? So like I said, guys, uh, most, uh, some guys are like, ah, who cares? There was those replies, and some guys were kind of like, no shit, and then there were some fucking deer and headlights dick in the mouth guys, as far as like, huh, really? Which I don't blame them, because I thought the same goddamn thing when I was a teenager. Uh, I'm telling you, most of these guys don't listen to metal. I'm flat out fucking telling you. Then you know what? A lot of the newbie bands that I'm like, eh, you know what I mean? Like the Gate Creepers, Two Molds, things like that. Um, Sinquizio Box, the things I'll give those guys, those bands, all those guys probably do listen to metal for the most part. I could be wrong. I don't I don't know any of them. Um, don't think I've ever met them, not to my knowledge anyways. But I, they're more likely to listen to metal. The older guys, very fucking few. 
just even at Metal Threat. I was talking to, what's his name? I already forget his name again. Very, very nice guy. The singer of Sorcery. Same thing he point blank told me. Barely listens to Metal. I was like, so you never listen to ever, like, even Left Hand Path? He's like, oh, it's good. He's like, I'll put, put that on every now and, then, now and again. What I tell you, though? The old guy's like, at best, once or twice a year, they'll, to they'll toss on an oldie metal that they grew up on. Like, yeah, Left Hand Path, and maybe a Slow We Rot, Seven Churches, Bathory, Venom, that type of stuff. But for the more, most part, they're listening to classic rock. He point blank told me that. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really listen to metal. Um, which, whatever. I don't care. I'm just saying. Like, that's what I was calling, saying this shit out. I was just telling him as a, you know, as a topic to talk about on the fucking channel. And some bozos, leave Tom G alone. What do you mean? He likes metal. No, he don't. Like when I said, people, Glenn Benton doesn't listen to metal. And then he, like, even my buddy Dan Merle comes over. Ah, I think he does. Fucking week later, goddamn interview comes out. Straight up. I'll listen to Rush. Don't listen. Don't even care about this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I think it was my buddy Brian Woody came in the comments, like, talking about Ross Stone. He's like, no, Ross actually still likes metal. Okay. I, I'm not saying all of them. I'm sure there's guys that do. Vast majority of them, though. I think that that what's in my bag is it was probably the norm. Any any guys if they've been in the if they've been putting out metal since like early '90s down, the eighty five to ninety percent chance they don't listen to metal anymore. Except again, some of the classics that they grew up on. That's it. That is absolute fucking it. And some of them probably not even that. To be completely honest with you. So yeah, it does that does, doesn't shock me the, the fucking goddamn slightest. Uh, Zachary Sueta. Thanks, J Dog. Do you have any idea if Rika Death plans to release Imperial Doom on vinyl? We need that bootleg since Nuclear Blast and Monstrosity have no desire to work together. Uh, I do not know, but I'll say this is I would love for Hells to fucking do on those on um vinyl, both Imperial Doom and Millennium would be fan fucking tastic. Um I don't see why it'd be out of the realm of impossibility, other than I'm sure it's a bunch of fucking douche canoes over at Nuclear Blast. Don't know for sure, so calm the fuck down if they're all metal as fuck over there. But a highly educated assumption, it's a bunch of fucking idiots that, that don't listen to Destroyer 666. Let's just say that. Again, could be wrong, but that's my educated goddamn guess. Um, and actually, it's funny, because actually, uh, was Gene from a Perdition Temple. Maybe he'll it uh, be up by this time. You see this? I did an interview with him. I don't think it was on camera, though. I think it was off camera. He's talking about uh, monstrosity and shit like that, and that. He's like, yeah, maybe you guys should put that house. It's funny you say that. that that's been on my want list to do for fucking ever. If I had to just pick one... It'd be uh, Imperial Doom on vinyl. But then uh, my dream project would be Imperial Doom on vinyl, Millennium on vinyl, and both reissued on CD on those goddamn slick-ass fucking-looking digibooks. Not those shit-ass fucking digipacks that are flimsy as fuck. But they open out a, like a book, like we did the Regurgitation Tales of Necrophilia, Embalmer Emanations, the Necrophagia disc we did. Devils that pick those up, you'll know what the fuck I'm talking about. Uh, I, th I know a few people don't like those. I don't know fucking why. Like it, it, it's like the it's like the vinyl version of a CD. It's they're it's sharp as hell. Um, that would be my dream project. Well, ever fucking happen? Probably not again because fucking bozos in the goddamn way, gatekeeping shit that they don't even like. So we'll see. But uh, I would that would love the hell's to do. If anyone knows anybody at Nuclear Blast, tell them to contact the old fucking goddamn dog. Anyways, a stack of slips now. Goddamn it! And this is from Shane Tolley. J Dog, here's a question. Will the latest comp get a vinyl release? That cannibal cover art is screaming to be on an LP jacket. I agree. Keep up the great work with your vids and the label, HHR Rules. Uh, we haven't talked about it. Uh, I'll put in the suggestion bin. The only problem I could see, I could see both Eric and Chase being up for doing the um, comp on LP. As a matter of fact, I'm kind of surprised that Chase didn't push for it for years because it was his, I, the comp on LP idea, I was like, oh, that's kind of, in my, my mind, was, I thought it was kind of stupid, to be honest with you, because, um, it was like a free handout CD. Is like, anybody want to buy it? It's a bunch of bands, but people liked it. And I, I think having the cover artwork, I agree for that reason alone. All the artworks that we've done, I like them all on LP was cool. So I, I wasn't against it. I just thought it was kind of dumb, like in the sense that I don't know, is anybody going like, to like other than for free? Is anybody going to want to buy that? Um, because it was just a free handout CD as advertisement, basically. But um, it has not been brought up. And so now, having said that, I can see the only problem getting the way is our release schedule is fucking packed to the goddamn gills. Um, like our budget per month all the way up to like mid next year. So that means every month's booked all the way to let's just say June for back, not this June, next June for a lack of, um, for lack of better, uh, words that it say June 
submit that one. And let's say by then, vinyl turnaround plants have turned have gotten better. So let's say they're back to like a three month turnaround time then. So with the ones that are submitted in June that we already have scheduled everything, then another three months on that turnaround time. Those are coming out in September next year. So put it in perspective as far as if we do do it, where the fuck are we going to squeeze it in and when the fuck that's going to be? Who the fuck knows? But definitely up for it. Gordon Silly. Comments all the fucking goddamn time. And another goddamn order from him. Hey, J Dog. Hey, J Doggy Dog. Question for the channel. Did you ever struggle with depression at all as a teenager? Question mark. I struggled with it a lot. A lot of it was mostly teenage angst, but I felt really isolated and too mature around people my age. I didn't really have anything in common with them. I wish I had a friend back then that was into the same music as me so I could go to shows with, seek out new bands, etc. I love being the only one into metal, but would have been would have been cool to have a friend into it as well. Um no, I not not really. I mean, I never uh I, just by nature I've never been a really a fucking depressed person. Um, for the teenage wise, yeah, because I didn't have any friends in school either. I, I had people that I thought were okay, but none of them were in the battle, goddammit. But I think the reason I got by through that, which didn't bother me, is because we went to shows all the time. Again, I started going to shows at age 13, and the people I talked to were all the, um, guys, it's fucking shows. It was the, at the time, it was the Dwayne Morris's, the, the Don of the Dead's, the Jim Kanye's. Trying to think who else I talked to, but Brian Baxter, Mutant Mike. Uh, trying to think who else I knew. Guys like Dan Merle, Mike Hughes. I didn't meet until probably my early adult years. But those guys for sure that I mentioned, they were the ones I saw at shows, and I just talked to them. You know what I mean? Um, I'm sure, I'm forgetting a couple others too. Um, and they were just always much older, and but they had the same interests, so uh, I just kind of um. Uh, just kind of bonded with them, to be honest with you, you know, or just the bands that came through always hung out and talked with the bands. Um, so I guess that void was kind of filled, didn't really feel lonely. And then in the meantime, too, because like, and I went to school, right? And then outside that, I worked. I've had a job since I was 13 years old. Part of the reason I, I be honestly believe that most people are fucking depressed. Now, I understand some of it's literally a fucking genetic, genetic chemical imbalance. When it comes to that, you're fucked. You're just going to take medications. That's, you know, it sucks, but it is what it is, right? Um, luckily I didn't have that goddamn problem, but I think most people are depressed is because they don't have a purpose in fucking life. So they're just sitting on their couch doing stupid shit. Stay busy, stay active. Um, you won't have time to get depressed. That's, that's my best solution for you. I'm no fucking psychiatrist. I could be goddamn wrong, but I think that's why I didn't get depressed because I can tell you right now, the most I ever got depressed in my life close to it was during the fucking, uh, COVID lockdown shit. And I wouldn't even say I was depressed, but definitely getting a little bit towards it because the gyms were all closed and shit. So only thing I had was going to hell's granted. We were super fucking busy during that time. So it kept me fucking busy, but it, it seemed like just a lack of purpose. All I did was get up, go to the warehouse, come home, basically go to sleep. Uh, so that kind of started waning on you because you couldn't do anything else. Um, so I can imagine if all you have is a nine to five job, get up, go to your nine to five job, you come home, you watch TV, have a few beers, go to bed, repeat. I mean, no offense to anybody that's doing that, but that, that just fucking sucks. Um, that's just, I'd be, I'd be just, uh, that sounds depressing to me. So it's like, be, be busy, do something, find a hobby, get a, uh, hell, if you have absolutely nothing going on, I, I, this is what I would do to be completely honest. I'd have a second job. Uh, to me, if I, if, if all you're doing is going home and fucking, uh, laying on the couch, to me, that is a complete fucking waste of time. I'd get a part-time job at McDonald's or something. I'm not even fucking joking. Hell, if you're goddamn fucking single, uh, I can tell you right now, you fucking meet the goddamn most chicks you'll ever fucking meet is working at a, like a fast food restaurant. How do I know? Because I worked at them. Damn it. And I'm telling you right now, shit, if J-Dog actually had game, he never had game even still now, but if he had game back then, shit, you'd be getting fucking pussy left and right. It's, it's, it's available. It's waving in front of your fucking face working there. Um, So if you're single and you're down the dumps and you got no all this extra time in the evenings, highly recommend hitting up the fucking Mickey D's or BK. That's what I would do, to be completely honest with you. If I wasn't in the gym or had any of the hobbies, just a nine to five cubicle, go home, nothing else going on. No, well, sitting on the couch, that's a waste of money. At least go make some extra fucking loot and possibly meet somebody. Because you're not going to meet anybody sitting on your goddamn couch. Hell, you can just go to the goddamn gas station. You're more likely to bump into somebody and uh, 
granted, that's probably not going to happen. It's, it's never happened to me, but I'm just saying it's more likely to happen than on your fucking couch. Then they, they, nothing's going to happen there for, for that's a 100% guarantee. At least there's a fucking 0.05% chance you might bump into somebody at the gas station, right? So, yeah, the depression thing didn't happen, but I think this, I, I only think it's because I've always stayed super busy. So, that's my words, words of wisdom. Take it or leave it or do whatever the fuck you want with it, goddammit, if you're, if you're struggling with depression. That's all I got. Colin Schumacher. Quick question for j Dog. You don't come off to me as the world's biggest fan of cheese ball nerdy power metal. That I'm not. But I'm curious to know if you've ever, if you've never even given Blind Guardian a chance. Apparently you've never seen any of the Hellcast episodes I've done with uh, Craig. I was jamming Nightfall in Middle Earth, uh, in Middle Earth earlier today for the first time in years, and was blown away by the soaring solos and kick-ass choruses. Thoughts? By the way, if you find, if you find some, my voice sounds fucking funny, it's not because I was up all night sucking fucking dick, gagging on cock. It's because uh, all the talking through the whole weekend, I literally lost my fucking voice, and it's just kind of starting to come back after two goddamn days. So, uh, so if, I sound, if I sound funky, that's fucking why, because it still kind of hurts, to be honest with you. Uh, Craig played me Blind Guardian. Was it that Mirror Mirror? I thought it was pretty fucking good. I mean, uh, am I going to put that on over goddamn the, the old CC, Kings, King of Kings? No, but um, I thought it was pretty good. And I like that fucking, uh, I've talked about on the channel, Halloween, Keeper of the Seven Keys. Uh like that too. thought that was jamming as a mofo. Uh, Future World's my favorite song on there, in case you happen to give a goddamn fuck. That's happy as fuck, j Dog. Yeah, it kind of is. I, then I like a little bit of music uh, from every subgenre. I've always fucking said that. I mean, there's somewhat exceptional to the rule, like anything industrial. I've yet to find anything that I like with that. But you never know, goddamn know. Maybe I would. Hell, I like the coffin shakers, and that's like country, dark country type shit. Uh, I, I, some of their songs I don't like, but I definitely like songs by them. I think they have some very fucking good songs. Like uh, From Here to Hell, uh, Transylvania. Those ones stick out from what I remember. Uh, I like those. So I like a little bit. I do like other stuff, believe it or not. But I've yet to find anything in the industrial world that I like. But maybe there would be. But a power metal? Very little, just the ones I mentioned. Uh, I, I I enjoy those. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't say that it's, uh, you know, to be completely honest, I mean, I, even some of the happy fucking power metal stuff that I would like, that'd be cheesy as fuck, I would prefer that over this ultra goddamn tough guy cabalt fucking black metal that has not a goddamn riff, riff to be found in sight. I would take that, I would take that power, cheese ball power metal shit any goddamn day of the week of it. Or uh, some of the fucking ultra brutal shit post disgorge and Brodequin, where it was just a wall of fucking noise. I'm like, yeah, this is brutal. I mean, it's extreme. I was like, but literally, it just sounds like one big, long-ass fucking blur. I would take it over that bullshit, too. So, I don't think it's as bad as that crap. Thanks, goddamn one line. Colin Mornar. Uh, J-Dog. Around, around when did tapes become so popular again? Do they sell well compared to CDs and records? I worked at a record store 10 years ago, and we didn't even carry them. Yep. I don't remember a single customer asking for them either. Yep. For the devil's talking trash about the format, I have a Don't Break the Oath cassette that I scored off the original owner, and it still sounds better than, the, than, than any digital format. Take care of your shit, Colin. About when? Because I, I told the fucking Don of the Dead story with the Radio Damnation tapes. Got him. Just take these damn things. <laughs> um because nobody bought tapes. Even he knew it, and that was early 2000s. About when did they become popular? M it, yeah. Ten years ago is when popular, popular, They but they picked up prior to ten years ago. Maybe 15, it, 15 years ago, it was a noticeable increase, but still slow. Ten years is where it was becoming obvious that this is a trend. And then ever since then, however, it is it has become a trend in the last ten years or so. But uh, do they sell better than CDs or LPs? No, not not even close. Um, like we might sell on a good day of cassettes. We might sell 25 to 30 cassettes on a good day for every 100 CDs or every 100 LPs. Roughly. I'm just, I'm just, I'm eyeballing. I actually never took the stats, but it's def it's definitely, yeah, it's about, it's about a third of what CDs or LPs would be, I would say, per day. Yeah. I would say as a, as a, just an average, just off the top, eyeballing it, uh, answer. I would, I would say, I'd say that. David Kelly, J Dog, question for the channel. God damn it, what are your thoughts on metal shirts with photos of band members on the back? <laughs> I think this one has band members on the back, actually. 
uh, pick this up a goddamn metal thread in case you happen to give a flying ass fuck from Carlos at uh, of Sacral Curse. Personally, I think they look tacky as fuck. When a shirt has some cool metal art on front and on back is a bunch of canoes standing around <laughs> trying to look like tough guys. On another note, I know you. <laughs> it's just completely random. On another note, I know you love the first Divine Empire, dude. Fucking first Divine Empire Redemption. I guess any of you guys that missed out, that's fucking S tier fucking goddamn uh metal. I don't know how anyone claims to be in a death metal doesn't like that goddamn banger. If you don't like that goddamn banger, you're either fucking deaf, stupid, or flat out fucking haven't heard it, or flat out don't like death metal. You're just you're more of a cavalt black metal tough guy. Or a pizza fucking thrasher. One of those goddamn four categories. There is no way. Don't come over here on Mr. Go Mr. Goddamn Death Metal. And you don't. D D Divine Empire Redemption. Eh. It's okay. That doesn't even make fucking sense. That's got oomph for fucking days. Uh, they fell off. Listening to their falling outs. But their fourth album method of execution is an underrated heavy as fuck catchy ass. You know what? I didn't even know they had a fourth one. I remember hearing the third one. Isn't there like a pile of skulls or something on the cover? And I remember not liking it at all. Was it called Nostradamus, maybe? I mean, it's been years since I've seen or heard it. Don't quote me. But I'm actually kind of curious to go listen to third and fourth. I didn't know they had four. I knew they had three. Because uh, after our LP came down of Redemption, I went back and listened listened to uh, Doom to Inherit because I've always had the CD. Didn't listen to it in years. I'm always better. I never thought it sucked. I just thought it was very lackluster compared to Redemption. Revisiting, it is still lacking compared to Redemption, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm like, this is a good fucking record. I was like, I was like, this, I mean, it destroys fucking 95% of the stuff that is in the death metal scene that has come out in the last, I don't know, five, eight, 10 years, in my opinion. I mean, there is stuff in the five, eight, 10 years period of death metal that I like more. I mean, don't give me the fucking, don't completely twist my goddamn words. I'm not saying that. Like fucking both pharmacy albums, I like more. They're stuff, but I'm just saying, as a fucking whole, especially some of the goddamn just, wow, oh, this again type of shit. Uh, the Doom to Inherit, I thought was much better than any of those. Um, so Doom to Inherit, also a good album. So when I went back and listened to it, uh, it did spike my interest. I was like, maybe I should go back and listen to that third one. And the fourth one, I just, maybe I, it was the fourth one I heard, and I never heard the third one. I definitely never heard four albums. I heard three albums. Because one of them, I remember, this sucks. This is what I thought. Uh, but again, it could have been I having a bad day because some stuff you do revision. Like, oh, this is pretty, this is pretty fucking good. What the fuck was I thinking? Was I an off day, bad day? Listen to a bad set of speakers, fucking goddamn roofers fixing the hell's fucking roof, buzzing and shit going off in the middle. That well, that wasn't a true listening experience. Goddamn it, there could have, it could have been one of those fucking scenarios. Um, but I don't own the uh, third or fourth record, so that would be a YouTuber. Oh, and I didn't even answer your goddamn question. Shirts. I I have a I have a motto for fucking shirts. Legends that actually have an image are allowed on the back of a shirts. Who are legends that have a goddamn image? Venom, Merciful Fate, King Diamond, not fucking doink ass denner and cheater, cheetah fucking pants. Um Cannibal Corpse, my vile shirt has the fucking uh them on the back. My Tomb of the Mutilator shirt has that badass fucking back of the members look metal as fuck. Deicide, legends, goddamn it. I don't need to go down that goddamn list. Legends again. They that look. You got to at least look fucking metal. You got to look like you're a fucking metalhead. That is completely acceptable to me. Ham and eggers are not allowed on backs. Well, who are ham and eggers, J Dog? Anyone that's been around five years or fucking less. I, I, honestly, I'm gonna go down and say it. Ten years or fucking less. Why? Because ten years is goddamn. You, to me, you're still. If your band's been around only ten years, been around since 2013. What, what the fuck? I mean, it's a brand new fucking band to me. That's that's not old. That ain't legend. Those are goddamn ham and eggers. You know, they're, they're, they gotta earn their stripes. You know what I mean? Well, Jay Dog, you like some ham and eggers. I didn't say ham and eggers fucking suck. I just said they're goddamn newbies that haven't earned their stripes yet. Earn your motherfucking stripes. Uh, earn, uh, earn fucking goddamn uh, classic status. Uh, you know, leaders of the pack, as you will. And look goddamn metal. Not put no Epper De Decker Commodity, whatever the fuck that band's called. Canoe ass looking motherfucker, even if it was good. On the back of a goddamn shirt. Or better, better example, I wouldn't put the guys from Devourment on the back of my shirt, even though I do like Molesty the Decapitated. And at this point, you can make the argument it's legend, especially for the uh, style of uh, the br brutal stuff. It definitely is, whether you like it or not. It, it'd be legendary in that status of, of that subgenre, right? Uh, but I wouldn't wear those fucking bozo-ass backwards hat fucking 
white wife beating look wife beater shirt fucking wearing motherfucker baggy blue jean ass fucking bozos thanking God in their goddamn lyrics in the back of my shit. They won't see the back on the dog T. That's for goddamn sure. But legends and destroyer six 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 is fucking legend. They're in the goddamn sadistic intent and unslaughtered disaster denial god camp. If you don't know them or like them, just get fucking lost and suck a fucking dick. There's certain bands you just like. To me, that's like saying you don't fucking like Black Sabbath. If you claim to be an extreme music, you don't like the stress of six. That is a mandatory goddamn must. Because honestly, if you like thrash, you should like them. If you like black metal, you should fucking like them. If you like death metal, you fucking should like them. So don't come over. So they get a goddamn bath is what I'm fucking saying. That's my rule. Ham and Eggers, get fucking lost. Earn your stripes. Legends that look metal, they're allowed on the back of a tee. Last goddamn question. This movie is real dragging out, but I want to get all these fucking done. Adam ben, ben, ben and Son. Hey, I dog. Any idea if there exists bootleg LPs of Repulsion when Matt Harvey was playing with them? Question mark. I doubt it. Uh, and if they do, it do exist. I've never seen them. To be honest, I'd pick one up though. That'd be kind of cool. Just kind of like there's that Black Sabbath bootleg CD with uh, Rob Halford, a uh, sync for Sabbath filled in. I forget the whole story of why he did, but uh, there is a bootleg CD of that, and uh, I think that's kind of cool. You know, seeing Heron Halford play the songs uh, again. Boots are the best. If you don't know it, then you're probably not in underground music. Also, are there any live LPs of Possessed when the Sadistic Intent guys were playing? Question mark. Again, I'd pick it up. I think that'd be pretty cool. Not to my knowledge, though. I, I don't own one, and I've never seen one. Uh, but if I if I was flipping through some records and there were, it was for sale at somebody's bin, I'd buy one. That's for goddamn sure. FYI, I know you like the uh, you like to reference Tupac. I don't know if I like to. It's just that's who, him and Snoop and Coolio and that's about all I fucking know. Uh, that that's what I have for a reference. When it comes to rap, uh, but he has not played a concert since you were eleven years old. <laughs> I'm aware of that, mostly because he was shot and killed in 1996. Yeah, I'm aware of the back back story on the fucking Pac. But hey, again, I say whatever reference of the shitty ass Pac is today, that's who the fucking goddamn talking about. I just don't know because I don't fucking follow that bullshit because I have zero goddamn interest. I'm busy listening to Destroyer 666. Comments, questions, concerns, you know what the fuck to do. But the guy box can answer by the morning. Later, goddamn it!